back to the d3 square and suddenly there's this queen h7 move and a king that was once secure no issues whatsoever is going to get checked quite a bit the the engine is not even giving a two point win here even though black is up two rooks and two pawns for the queen that should be more than enough to say three points four point edge but now it's giving less than a two point edge and its best lines are not that attractive rook one c2 is its first thought queen h7 check king f8 and now f5 and it's not easy to deal with these checks that are about to happen to the king so i'm not sure what is going on but it looks like fabiano has played his first real suboptimal move of the tournament a significant one that it was that was different from uh, by by quality from other moves that could have been played this move f takes on g4 was absolutely not cool for him and he's starting to realize it i think as he stares at the board and an opportunity maybe for him to get nicked and not have that perfect score anymore i still think it's black for choice let's not overstate the case too much but he could have won right now, and he's not going to appreciate it when this line is shown to him after the game. Guys? Well, thank you for that, Maurice. I'm still, like, reeling from the idea that White does have uh, uh, opportunity to save the game because it just looked like, for example, after King F7, as we're mentioning, it's such a big material edge, you would think that uh, <clears throat> black should just be able to reel the point home. Uh, clarify for me why after queen d3, rook h8, I'm assuming f5? f5, yes. Yes, I'm assuming f5, and let's say I drop back with my rook, rook c6, just to end up trying to protect my king. I guess takes on e6, takes on e6, queen f5, yeah. and you're getting some activity that I would prefer not to have allowed. So that makes sense that White's queen is suddenly active um, an undeserved opportunity, I would guess, for Hikaru in that case. Still, uh, I would be stunned, in fact, if Fabiano didn't win, but for sure he's made his own task harder by having missed Bishop H4. I'll grant you that. And though we are in the second time control, still only 15 minutes for Fabiano here, so um, they might get into a little second time con time control time pressure, right. which hasn't happened for us very much in this Tinkfield calf, right? No. We're to have a bigger even gotten into the second time control. Exactly. Many um, of our results ended up in the first Oh time yeah, control. It, I goodness. mean, it's, it's been really slashing. So Levon Aronian versus Magnus Carlsen, Pardon let's take me, a peek at that game. For sure. we. That's kind of... So are Magnus fallen off our screen, so let's just see what we had. We'll go back a few moves, just a second. Where's my, there we go. Uh, I think we left it after knight f3, right, Jen? Rook c5, rook b2, these moves have been played. Knight d2. Uh, As we mentioned earlier, trying to put the pressure on the c4 pawn and hint wrapped at knight e4, knight d6 as well. Exactly. So, so bishop, bishop c6, c6 preventing that. And, well, well, first of all, you can't grab this pawn with the rook. There's an Oopsie. obvious, oops, removing the defender variation. You can't grab this pawn with the knight because then white's walking into a devastating pin after, for example, bishop d5 and rook c8. So the pawn is poisonous. So knight b3 was tried, taking advantage of the fact the pawn is pinned, the rook on c5 is hanging. We have seen rook b8 returning the favor. Uh, the knight can't grab the rook because the rook on b2 is hanging. So rook dropped back to c2. And, and I Magnus, Magnus played c3. C3, I was about to say. How's this for a cute little uh, idea, c3? So again, you can't grab the rook because uh, the rook on b2 is hanging. And I'm guessing rook b1. Rook b1 happened, and here we stand. OK, and now. Uh, Magnus to uh, close the curtain on this one. So let's say we play, in, I always said this combination of rook and bishop versus rook and knight, so uh, good for the, ooh, we may even have a cheapo. How's this for a cheapo? How about bishop e4? So good for the rook and bishop combination. Here's what I had in mind, by the way. Knight takes, rook takes, knight takes, and by 
no, it's not unfortunate circumstance. I'm sorry. Ah, the knight's just in time to defend the, the promotional score. Sorry about that. Okay, I had a hiccup. So bishop d5, the normal move, um, asking white what he wants to do in case of takes, 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 check. Again, we see this wonderful combination of rook and bishop dominating rook and knight. We're going to pick off one pawn and, uh, that, well, let's just continue the, the line for a moment. We do have a little bit of a counter uh, play here uh, with rook and knight, but mm, no, I think, uh, I think Magnus is well on his way here. I do think that Magnus is going to reel home the point. And if that were to happen, are we going to see three decisive games again? Do these guys ever draw? <laughs> I mean, wow. What's going on? Uh, An incredible round, indeed. Maurice. And Fabiano uh, still thinking. Uh, has Magnus increased his advantage? Actually, no. No. It seems as though Levon has defended quite well. And in this position, it's very hard to get anything going. You, he, he's going to lose his c3 pawn, basically. Uh, there's no really good move here. Uh, rook to c to b5 is the engine's first choice to just give him the pawn back. And uh, after bishop to d5, then rook b to c1 and play this position. And it looks as though the position is going to be this past a pawn that the engines don't really like and think that maybe this position's equal. Maybe I might be inclined to agree with you, though, Yaz. After this position, uh, it, is a, it is an extra pawn. After all, I guess rook check, trying to get behind the pawn, will be tricky. So uh, rook takes is playable. Yeah, this may be the, the way to play. All right, here, here, and here. And this kind of ending is notorious for being drawish, right? Or school me on this one, Yaz. This is the kind of ending that I know the rook behind the pawn, the A pawn, you're going to have to figure out how to get in. I mean, rook b5 doesn't work because of this move, uh, and it's hard to get over without giving up your f-pawn. What's happening here? Well, actually, it's a funny, a funny game. I remember uh, Magnus actually winning rook and four versus rook and four against Ruslan Ponomaryov because of a weak pawn on e5. I'm not sure that I fully understand what I'm missing, uh, uh, Maurice. Uh, I thought after c3, rook b1, I thought the move bishop d5 was going to give black an advantage. What am I missing? Uh, why doesn't the move bishop d5, uh, instead of going for that extra pawn variation that you showed, uh, that move struck me as in black's favor, and I'm surprised the engines don't consider it. There's a sneaky knight on the rim move, unfortunately, for this line. Knight takes, rook takes, and now knight a4. Ah, uh, very a sneaky four. move, preventing rook to b2, preparing to take with the knight and guard the a2 pawn. And it uh, doesn't look like you can make any real progress here in this oh. position. Knight a4, very sneaky Wait, knight dance. Knight a4, knight a4, a4 indeed. Wow. And went right back and missed that one as they. And as so a, he did play rook from c to b5. Maximum he'll get is that rook and pawn ending that we talked about after rook takes on c3 and bishop to d5. And, Hopefully for him, he'll be able to get some advantage in an endgame there, but that looks like a tricky endgame to win. Agreed. Well, we're going to keep a close eye on the defensive task here for both Olivan Aronian and for Hikaru Nakamura, both white players, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be right back. Thank you, Jen. Be surprised. Be intrigued. Be delighted. The World Chess Hall of Fame in St. Louis is nothing you'd expect and everything you love. Three galleries highlight the history, culture, and creativity behind the game. Explore chess in ways you never imagined. It's a one-of-a-kind cultural institution where rare artifacts and world-class art play together. The World Chess Hall of Fame. Mind. Art. Experience. Gonna make my move, gonna live my dream, gonna make my move, gonna live my dream. Every day, the future's getting closer. Every day, the future's looking bright. Every day is another beginning. Gonna make my move, gonna live my dream, gonna make my move, gonna live my dream, gonna make my move, gonna live my dream.
I'm Magnus Carlsen and you're watching the Sinkfield Cup live here from St. Louis. And I'd like to share some breaking news. I've been informed by my partner, Amy Lee, that uh, the Millionaire Chess Open that we have organized for October 9th through 13th at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas this fall will be covered in the New York Times in tomorrow's A section of the paper. Uh, the online edition, for those of you who are subscribed online or can access it, will appear in a couple of hours tonight. So we feel quite humbled and honored to be in the New York Times. We've been working really hard to promote this tournament as a possible way of promoting chess in the United States and around the world. So those of you who are interested, uh, haven't bought the Times in a while? I'm sure all of you have bought the Times recently. Uh, pick up a copy tomorrow and check it out or check it out online tonight. Guys? Thank you, Maurice. Always nice to have a breakthrough in the New York Times and get chess in. Uh, Absolutely, the, the, the main lady. coverage of chess. That's exactly what we need more of, right? Exactly. And in the meanwhile, we're sitting there looking at Hikaru's game, and it's it's amazing to me that uh, uh, Hikaru has basically been outplayed comprehensively for about the whole game, and suddenly he's in it with a shout. Uh, undeservedly so, uh, because that variation that we were looking at where we're just trying to contain the queen with rook h8, it seems like this move f5 uh, is just giving white enough activity and Fabiano uh, has gone into a, di a bit of a think and look at the times on the clock. Huge dif uh, Despair, uh, Indeed, just differential. five minutes for Fabiano now. Five minutes to five and Fabiano is realizing that it's not as simple as he thought. He thought it was just cut and dry over. It would have been, th that would have been the case if he had played that move bishop h4. The quick f5 takes g4 was played instead, and now he's got to win the game all over again. So big, ch uh, big s change in this uh, round five as we're getting into the si second time control. Indeed, and that is uh, going to be an issue for Fabiano because I know that Nekomar has an excellent psychological sense and in a way the position is easier to play for White because it's like you've got to either play a 5 or you're going to lose. Right. So he's going to continue to make quick moves and really put the pressure on Fabiano. Exactly. His moves are, are going to be forced all, all the way down the, the line and he's just looking to get an active queen. In the meanwhile, in the game between number one, number two coming into the tournament, uh, as Maurice predicted, the players have got into that very ending that Maurice said. Uh, the the past a pawn on a5. Obviously, only two results are black is playing for two results, which is a success uh, when you're black, of course, at this high level. Um, I'm thinking after check, check, uh, king back, rook goes over. And these are very, very difficult uh, positions for black to win. Um, if he does manage to win it, it's really uh, kudos. The problem is that black is going to need to bring his king over to the king, queen side so that, his pawn, so that he can promote his pawn or win white's rook. But it takes a lot of time to move your king over, and while the king's coming over there, well, you're going to lose your king side and pawns. And then our pawns Rook. are going to create this counterplay Rook. that will often make you sacrifice. Precisely. Um, Rook takes some, f7. And we do have some moves in the uh, Nakamura-Fabiano game. So instead of playing the move Rook h8, what Fabiano did do, pardon me, let me go back. Sometimes my return button doesn't exactly work the way I want it. Um, instead of trying to stop uh, queen h7 check, uh, Fabiano played rook c2 with obviously the obvious intention of pinning the bishop and maybe playing for a g4, uh, g3 kind of a tactic. Well, we see immediately queen h7 check um, being give, gifted the opportunity to get an active queen. Hikaru didn't hesitate. Queen no, no, H7 not, not going to hesitate with Fabiano now with a little less time as well. But Fabiano did quickly play his prepared response, king to e8. Right. Just and now Nakamura back on move. Exactly. So now what, what Hikaru needs to do is to make sure that uh, he's got plenty of checks in the position. Now, what 
His problem is he's, he's facing a bishop takes d4 type of threat, taking advantage of the, the bishop uh, being pinned to the king. And maybe white should actually just step back with his king, with king f1 for a moment, because I don't really see any uh, edge uh, reasons. Well, maybe I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm oscillating here. I'm thinking maybe f5 actually deserves attention. At first I rejected it because I thought bishop takes d4 was going to win the game. Now I'm less certain. Because you see that we can play queen g6 check to start or queen g8? Well, I, it was queen g8 that threw me off balance here because I, against queen g6 I have king... Um, King d8, but it's this move queen g8 that made me hesitate, and I'm no longer sure anymore. Maurice, should Hikaru uh, take this precise moment to lash out with the move f5? Will it save his patoose? Well, it looks as though Fabiano's advantage is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. It used to be huge. Of course, bishop h4 was just winning. At some point, it was over two uh, points, that is. Now it's shrunk down to 1.3, for those of you who understand uh, computer speak. That means it's only a pawn and uh, some change. When he's up a massive amount of material on the board, two rooks versus a queen, that's already an extra material advantage, plus the two extra pawns, plus the attack on this king, and your instincts, your spidey sense of defense, Yaz, did not betray you. King to F1 is the move that the engines say really puts it to block, to figure out how to co coordinate those rooks and bishop with a simultaneous attack on the king and face the wrath of this white queen, which is going to use the f5 move plus a bunch of checks in order to harass the black king. This game is very complicated now. It is possible that he is still winning. He definitely has the edge, but it is not the same anymore by a long way. And Nakamura, if he can just settle his nerves and realize that the opportunity is here, he can certainly harass Fabiano quite a bit and make this game much, much harder than he deserved after the way he played. And you could see it in the way his body language is suggesting that he has a chance now, a puncher's chance, and he's going to go for it. And you know Nakamura, when it's wild, that's when he's at his best. And look at that. He's gotten up from the board. He realizes that he has a very good chance to save this game. He didn't play King F1. He did he, play F5. Speaking of puncher's chances, that is one of my dad's uh, favorite expressions. The head puncher's chance, yeah. <laughs> uh, F5. Uh, I thought King F1 uh, as a prelude to F5. Does F5 have an instant reputation, though? Uh, and uh, Maurice, I... I, F5 is a blunder, guys. F5 is actually a blunder. He should have moved the king first. F5, and now bishop takes on d4, is winning again. And now bishop takes d4. If he plays it, that is over again. It looks like Nakamura has definitely messed up. He doesn't have a perpetual anymore with the checks. The king can just march to the other side of the board, and he's going to go down a full piece after all these checks. It looks like Caruana has gotten the chance again to win the game. F5 was a bad move, and there's, there's just no way to get out of it. Look at this king march all the way and get a little, uh, get all the way on the other side. Well, there's, uh, there's different kinds of moves here, this just being one of them, and after this move, he could just put a rook in the way. You could sack your queen if you want in order to get the bishop back like this, but this is a completely lost position, and Nakamura looks like he's going to go down after bishop takes d4. F yet a moment, just like bishop h4 was a chance for... For Caruana, King F1 was a chance for Nakamura, and now he's missed it, and Bishop takes D4 is just winning. So second chance, if he just can analyze his king marching to the other side, he will get his chance to win the game, but his seconds are ticking down. He will, though, I think, because, you know, the difference between Bishop D4 and Bishop H4 is quite vast. Bishop H4 is much harder, to, easier to miss. Bishop H4 is much easier to miss than uh, Bishop takes D4. So yeah, I, well, I mean, you I just played got the, it. Yeah, I think you... It's, it's very clear. When you play the move rook c2, pinning the bishop, your intention is to play bishop takes d4. Your opponent lets you play it. You just can kind of go through the, your analysis and confirm that bishop takes d4 is a winner. Bishop h4, harder move to spot. Bishop d4 is not a hard move to spot. That's, you're just following up. You said a, now you're going to say b. So I think uh, f5, 
Uh, Although it is his, hard to see King F1, so that is a better corollary. I mean, because he was he's been he's been going after all this active play, so maybe he kind of fell into that trap that we were talking about. That Caruana is now down on time. He had over 20 minutes on the clock, so he could have slowed down a little bit rather than playing F5 so quickly. Well, for, for sure, and I don't see King F1 as being a hard move to spot. And Bishop After takes d4 has been played. Snapped it off the board, of course, and, and that's uh, now more back at the board now. Now, what are you going to do? Well, now he's it, he, he looking up at the sky, rechecking his calculations, but the board still the position. Well, <laughs> the position I mean, on the board. The the line that uh, Maurice was showing just simply speaks for itself. The king gets out of dodge and just goes over here, finds sanctuary on the queen side. In the meantime, this rook takes f2 check is hanging over black, white's king. Now I wonder if he was thinking and about just playing takes an e6 in this position with the pawn and uh, trying to make it interesting in that way. Well, unfortunately, uh, I think you're naked. I think you're just you're, you're you're losing your queen or uh, are you walking is there a force mate in the position? I'd kind of be surprised if there wasn't a force mate. Right. So you're saying rook g2 check here. King right. F. So we're playing king f4. Yeah, and I guess there's no force mate. I was looking at king d6. I found, Aww. I thought this was sweet. That was a sweet that one. That is a pretty good one. We've been but unfortunately, nice there's a king f6. And We've uh, been looking at some sweet mates suddenly, in this game. Suddenly, it's not so sweet. Uh, but okay, there's got to be uh, a simple win here. F. We're, we're taking a bishop with check after all. Come on. Takes, takes, let's find it. Um, but I'm wondering if maybe Nakamura missed something in this variation. Maybe, maybe he, there might, was... he might have calculated. Oh, you know what we've got? This is really nasty. We've got a, a move like Bishop G7, just blocking the queen wow, from that. playing D7. And the bishop's That's untouchable. So we've got defensive resources like that. So we don't have to keep checking, is what you're saying. Right. I can keep that in reserve for just a moment. But bishop g7 looks like it. Uh, there's got to be other resources as well to, to reel in the whole point. Maurice, what do you think about this, this line, taking on e6? Perhaps this is what Nakamura had in mind. Maybe he did. And just so that you guys don't have to work too hard, since the engine is just saying, look, it's, it's bad, but it's not mate. It doesn't see a mate at all. Your line, yes, is just fine up to this point. The simplest move here, the move that is giving as hugely winning, is simply rook g7, and your queen has no potential whatsoever, and any checks, the king will just come up. This pawn is free. That pawn's free. You can't fight a rook, two rooks, a bishop, and a gaggle of pawns coming at a, a king. The queen just doesn't stand a chance. So this would warrant resignation quite quickly if Nakamura went for this line. I think that you look at the body language of Caruana, it just suddenly changed. Remember a second ago, his head was down, staring. He probably saw options like King F1 and was calculating it. But as soon as Hikaru played F5, he's like, what? Bishop D4, my king walks. I'm back in business. Mr. Perfect once again. Mm. Guys? Thank you. Big relief for uh, Fabiano to play Bishop takes D4 and get back. Uh, a decisive advantage in that material, what you were just pointing out, rook g7. Yeah, I was looking at bishop g7. I don't, don't ask me why. Rook g7, much more powerful move, consolidating uh, the uh, overwhelming material advantage of two, bi two rooks and a bishop versus queen. So that game is over. And uh, we have some comments from our Twitter audience. Claudia Munoz, uh, the National Girls Invitational Champion, says that on the positive side, whether Caruana or Nakamura wins, an American will get the full point. <laughs> Somehow they'll either share the sense. point or one point will be had. Yes, yeah, very, very patriotic uh, comment. And uh, we also have a Spanish listener who is um, commenting that um, he doesn't like Nakamura's bluff with 20 minutes more on the clock. It's not proper. Especially in such a tactical position. F5, you Referring mean, to F5, F5 is basically ah, a bluff because, um, in fact, it, it doesn't work. But it's easier to say that, of course, when you have the benefit of computer analysis. Um, to begin. Nakamura getting caught up in the moment, seeing I have a chance and trying to put pressure on Fabiano, it is possible to relate to that. Agreed, agreed. And I think from, from uh, Hikaru's circumstance or situation, 
you know, he's sitting there saying, I need to make a, a perpetual check. I need to get an F5. He just needed to play King F1. Preface it all with King F1. And it looks like we have some Nakamura fans there in the audience. We do. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 with the, with the isn't that his fiance? Yes, Maria. Uh, Maria. Wife? I'm his sorry. wife? No, no, fiance. Right? Fiance then. Fiance Maria, uh, off to the right, looking really concerned right now about the position. I'm, I'm sure she's worried. She is from Italy, Italy. as well, uh, where we know she's rooting for. Her, for her. <laughs> we know exactly who she's rooting for in this position. Yeah, she right. looks very concerned about the position right now. Okay, and just turning to our other game for a moment, an interesting decision by um, Lavon Aronian in this position. I, he played the move King H2, the crafty move. I thought his intention was indeed to play Rook check and bring his Rook as quickly as possible behind the pawn. Instead, he played the move King G2, eyeballing perhaps an opportunity of bringing his king all the way up the king side h4 and to g5. So the obvious question is, did he make the right choice here? And will his king uh, provide him enough counterplay while trying, while trying <clears throat> to deal with this passer? So let's, let's play some moves for black, king over, Let's play this move, king h4, uh, because you can't, you, you, you would be too slow in this uh, variation. This variation, the rook would get behind uh, the pawn, for example, like, well, just this. So you can't, you can't take the pawn with the rook, but you can go over here, pardon me, you could go over here with your king. Uh, that's not the move I wanted, pardon me. I wanted to do it, do it in this way. So now we'll go here, here. Now you need to get your king to touch that pawn. Yeah, so here, here. Okay, I've defended the pawn, but now I've got to calculate. Okay, so a pause because one of these two pawns are gonna be captured. Let me capture this one. Let's take this one, and this looks like enough counterplay. Yeah, it seems that way. Although it's, yeah, I think it is. It's been really close, but I think it is. So Nakamura's actually played neither of the moves that we looked at. He hasn't played Yikara. Queen G8 or takes on E6. Instead, he played the move Queen to G6 check. Actually, that was the first move I looked at, uh, Jen, and I just said, well, after queen g6 check, I didn't see another move after king d8. So I took my move back. I, th I, th I then looked at queen g8 check. So queen g6 check, king d8, what do you think? And it's a similar variation after queen g8, king c7, and the, the, the king is, of course, running. Well, last time you were taking on e6 with your queen. Well, so no, you're a better not even, version, of course. Right, so queen g6 check, ha, indeed, king d8, uh, as advertised by, that was an easy move for Fabiano to find. And then uh, Nakamura has simply taken the pawn on e6. With his queen? Yes. Okay, queen takes e6. Leaving the situation on f2. Uh, bishop, t uh, rook takes f2, king up, and now let's see how how we can best uh, reel in the point here. So rook c3 check. Rook c3 check is a, a natural and obvious one. King takes g4. Now we can pause because there's no 